Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Kayla and it's time to crack into a good book. So today's video is going to be a weekly reading update and I have six books to talk to you about today that I've finished since last time. So we've got mostly fantasy, some uh, fantasy and sci-fi romance, and then some thrillers. So before we get started, leave a sword emoji in the comments to let me know that you're here. So like always, we'll move our way from the lowest to the highest rated. And the first book I'll talk about today is a three-star book, and that's Beauty and Spring by Katie Wilde. This is an adult retelling of Beauty and the Beast, and it's like very, very short, but it's actually included in the physical version of the Midwinter Mail Order Bride, so that's how I read it. This is really easy to read, very easy to get into, but I think things are not explained the best, and so yeah, there's some like general <laughs> questions, I guess, that I still have. But, you know, I do always love a good Beauty and the Beast retelling, and I think this was a fun take on it, even though it wasn't my favorite. Cora and Gideon are best friends growing up, and I think it's really interesting to see how their bond changes over time and, you know, the reasons behind some of this. And I think it was interesting reading a Beauty and the Beast retelling where they actually know each other before, you know, the whole, like, trying to get them to fall in love. So that was an interesting take on it, certainly. Cora seems likable overall. I can certainly understand her reasons behind wanting to do things. Gideon, I think I was more mixed on, but he's okay overall. There are some, like, shifter bits going on here. I think the chemistry is actually helped by the fact that they already do know each other. It certainly is, does have some smut here. So yeah, I think, like, my main complaints on this is that it's really short. Like, it's 80 something pages I think so there's only so much you can do in that time span like I feel pretty satisfied with the story overall but like I don't know if I would necessarily go out of my way to read it had it not been included in the physical copy of that book so yeah I mean middle of the road if you're looking for a smutty Beauty and the Beast retelling that's really short and easy to read then sure like pick this up so then we have a couple of three and a half star books and the first one I'll talk about is Kingdom of Ash by Sarah J Mass so this is YA fantasy and the last book in the Throne of Glass series, so book seven. So, you know, naturally it's the conclusion to this epic story. We have war erupting. Aelin has sacrificed a lot for her people, and we've got these groups just scattered across the continents. Basically, it's like, do they have enough allies? Can they forge their own paths forward? So I think that this was a good conclusion overall to the series, though I still feel like it's just a bit too long. The pacing is all right overall. This does, I think, drag out in places, particularly with some of the battles but it does have some very exciting moments. It did cause me to feel some feels throughout, so, you know, like, ultimately I am glad that I have read the series because it did improve considerably. There are definitely some dark and epic moments here. You know, I think some things actually did remind me of Lord of the Rings with the big battles, so I always like that, you know, so, and that just kind of made me want to watch the Lord of the Rings movies. <laughs> What's kind of interesting here is like some of the magic in particular is similar to you know like the Crescent City I think that's the series name whatever like House of Earth and Blood I I'm kind of wondering like does it all tie together so that's kind of you know been interesting to to think about as I've read the series also there's like a really fun cameo Easter egg here which I really liked we do have lots of characters and points of view here to follow I think there are several themes of sacrifice with a lot of our characters. Aelin, I, you know, really liked her development overall. She definitely has a really tough path, I think, in this particular book, but I like seeing her overcome things and, you know, do what she's meant to do. There are definitely some heartbreaking things with her, but I, you know, continue to really like her bond with Rowan. I think there's some sad and sweet moments here with them in particular. Manon, I think, has been one of my favorite characters since she was introduced. And I really just liked seeing her take control of her life and, you know, just generally seeing the choices that she makes. She also has some really tough things to deal with here, and I really ultimately like where she ends up. Dorian, I think, definitely seems much more kingly and mature here, so that's been nice to see, and I think he finally does get more of a role to play, which was rather interesting. Like, I feel like he's kind of been in a, a bit of, like, a side character in most of the other books, so I think he is able to take charge a bit more here, so that was kind of, you know, refreshing. Kale and Irene, you know, I like seeing them again. I think Kale, again, just has really, really improved. So I'm, I'm glad to see that. You know, with Irene, it was pretty, it was really great to see her again. I really liked her. So I, and, and her healing abilities and like, it's just great to see the role that she has to play here. 
Nezrin and Sartak, I think they're more in the background here, which is a bit of a shame because I did like seeing them in the previous book, but I did like what we got to see. That's only a handful of the characters, but in general I think a lot of our characters are dealing with trauma and recovering from injuries, both physical and mental, and I think Sarah J. Mass does a really good job uh, portray portraying these types of themes. There are some content warnings here for torture, but yeah, so like, like I said, I guess to just like talk about the series in general, I am ultimately glad that I read it. Would I recommend it to everybody? Probably not, simply because it does take like two or three books for it to really get started. Like the first book is bad. <laughs> like I did not enjoy the first book at all. I think for me what has helped is reading them physically. I had listened to the first one on audio, which I think was a mistake because I can read these a hell of a lot faster than I can listen to them and I think that really helped me actually get through it. Again, like I've mentioned with several of these books, I think there are some places where it just gets like way too lengthy and, and bogged down. So being able to read it physically faster helped a lot. If you're willing to put in that time to, you know, get past the first couple of books where it's like, oh, okay, this isn't this isn't fabulous, then I would say sure. You know, if you're willing to do that and and kind of want this epic, easy to read type journey, then yeah, like sure, I'd recommend it. So I think for me personally, I have read several of these books, you know, fairly recently, and that's been pretty great for me. This is exactly what I'm in the mood for, you know, with, especially with all the things that I have going on. It's really easy to read. It doesn't take a lot of concentration, but at the same time, you know, there's some really cool moments and things that happen. So I have actually felt pretty positive about <laughs> the series as a whole. The other three and a half star book I'll talk about today is Dark Roads by Chevy Stevens. So I received this for review from the publisher through NetGalley, and this comes out August 3rd. So this is an adult thriller that's set in Canada, and we have this highway where young women have gone missing for years. We have Haley, who lives in this town of Colt Creek, and she's orphaned and forced to live with her aunt and her controlling police officer husband until she disappears one day. A year later, we also have Beth, who arrives in Colt Creek to search for her sister, and she may be targeted next. So this was not quite what I expected going into it, but I still ultimately enjoyed it. I think overall, I thought it would be much more focused on this serial killer. That's what I assumed, you know, just based on this highway with all these women disappearing. It is not that. <laughs> it is much slower paced than what I was anticipating, and it does have, I think, a lot more going on than just, you know, the serial killer aspect. In particular, there's actually a survivalist element to it that I kind of wish I had known about because that is something I really enjoy, and I think knowing that that sort of element was present it would have helped me, I think, enjoy this more just to kind of like temper my expectations accordingly. <laughs> I will say there are some really abrupt and confusing transitions at times, which I did struggle with a bit. So I think that was kind of, that was one of the reasons that contributed to my lower rating. Like it is, I don't know if it's just the formatting of the arc that I had, but there were times where it would be like, okay, next paragraph. And then, you know, suddenly some, some time has passed and I was like, oh, okay. Like it was just a little confusing. So I don't know if that's something, you know, like I said, that's just particular to the arc and if that'll be fixed in, you know, the final publication, but it was jarring to say the least. I do think the author is trying to make us question <laughs> so the suspect. You know, I think the things seem pretty immediately obvious, but then you wonder, it's like, is that actually meant to be misleading because it's almost too obvious? So I think I had fun with that overall. I did end up suspect what ended up happening. We do have three different parts here with two different narrators, Haley and Beth. Part three, I think, is the most fast-paced and exciting as everything is coming together. In terms of our narrators, Haley is really outdoorsy and intense. She has lost her parents and, you know, just wants to try to live a normal life and be able to do fun light things, but has some barriers to actually being able to do that. I really liked her as a narrator, even though I think she can be more brash, but I preferred her sections to Beth. And like I said, we do have some survivalist elements with Haley in particular that I loved. We also have Wolf, who's a dog, and I think Wolf is the best character of the book. I love him so much. He is definitely a smart and faithful companion. And then, of course, with Beth, I think she is more naive, and I I don't think she makes the smartest decisions, but I can kind of, like, respect where she's coming from and why she's doing what she's doing. I think she has a really difficult journey, but both she and Haley are kind of strong in their own ways. Then, you know, in terms of some of the side characters, we have Johnny, who's Haley's friend. He's a really nice guy and is actually like a very good friend. 
I liked how we do have some dirt biking elements involved with him, though I think, you know, like while I enjoyed the dirt biking stuff, like this does come up a lot, so this could be kind of hit or miss with some readers. Vaughn is a creepy jerk, and I just hated him throughout. So that's all I'll say about, you know, some of the side characters. But the inspiration behind this book is actually a real-life highway in Canada where several women have been murdered, and I honestly had no idea that this was a, a real thing. So it was kind of interesting and, like, also sad and horrifying to learn about. So there are some content warnings here. We have violence in, and also sexual violence against women. We've got serial killers. Obviously, there's some child porn as well, so just be aware of that going into it. Overall, I did enjoy this, but, you know, like I said, I think it would have been better for me if I had known that it wasn't just going to be like a serial killer book and that we did have the, some of these survivalist elements. But that being said, you know, if you are interested in this combination of serial killer plus survival stuff, I would definitely recommend this. So now we'll jump into several four-star books, and the first one I'll talk about here is The Midwinter Mail Order Bride by Katie Wilde. So Kat from Bruising Reviews actually bought this for me as a graduation present, which was really sweet of her. It was exactly what I was wanting, <laughs> basically. So this is an adult barbarian fantasy romance. We have Princess Anya, who offers herself as a bride to Kale the Conqueror in an attempt to secure a kingdom of her own, even if it means that she has to kill him to do it. Kale ends up turning her down and sends him home, and on the way, they end up getting to know each other. So this was super fun. I think it's really self-aware, and I think it, that helps it to be just like a really fun time. You know, for example, even like the map at the beginning of the book it says, kind of sets this tone. It actually says something about like, you know, the physical features and distances here are exaggerated for clarity and fun. So it's like, okay, you know, like that seems humorous already. So I like had a pretty positive mindset already going into it. The pacing is pretty good overall, you know, it's very easy to read, very easy to get into. There are some really hilarious quotes that made me laugh quite a bit. I also liked how each chapter had a different header for, you know, the main characters, like we alternate between uh, Anya and Kale, but I think it's, you know, it has like Kale, Kale the Conqueror or something like that, and, or like Kale the, you know, fill in the blank. But, you know, it, each chapter kind of corresponds to something that happened in the previous chapter or kind of indicates development of what happens with our characters. So I thought that was a really fun and clever touch. I feel pretty satisfied overall with this story, though I definitely want more in this world. I really liked watching their journey and just watching them get to know each other more. Kale is seemingly barbaric, but he has an honor code. He's actually like really sweet and respectful and asks for consent and like doesn't want to do things that, you know, the, the women don't want. So I thought that was really cute. Like I think there could have been a potential being this sort of like barbarian character to be, you know, a bit more aggressive and like abusive, I guess, but that was not the case. Anya, I think is really fierce. She feels unwanted, but wants to take charge of her destiny. And she still wants to save her kingdom, though no one believes her about certain things. So I really liked both of them, and I liked both of them together. I think there are some misunderstandings, but, you know, it's fantastic once they do actually talk. I also like how they challenge each other some. Kale kind of presents things to Anya in a way that she hadn't really thought about before, so I thought that was, you know, really cool to see. And of course, you know, there's some fun smut as well. So we do have some action as well, and these were pretty enjoyable. I liked, and I just generally liked how everything ended up tying together. So I really liked this. It's not particularly long. Like, I think the actual story is like 215 pages, and then the rest of this book is made up of Beauty and Spring. So yeah, I'm like, certainly I would suggest getting the physical copy so you can just go ahead and get both of the stories. But yeah, I mean, I definitely enjoyed this and would highly recommend it if you're looking for like a really fun barbarian study romance. And I like I have seen there's a few other books in this series or like this Deadlands world, and I definitely want to check those out. Well, the next four star book is going to be uh, Ice Planet Barbarians by Ruby Dixon. So this is an adult alien romance. Apparently I was in the mood for like barbarian and alien barbarian romances. I don't know. Uh, so <laughs> here we have some women who are abducted by aliens and they end up stranded on this ice planet of blue aliens. So this was actually really fun overall. Like I know so many people have been reading it recently and a lot of my friends have been reading it recently. So finally I was like, I mean, I just got to try it out for myself. So this I think is also self-aware and it kind of just embraces the silliness of the premise and rolls with it. The pacing is great. You're immediately thrown into the action with this abduction, and it certainly kept me wanting to pick it up. There's a funny tone here as well. There are some humorous moments and hilarious quips. 
There's also some really fun Star Wars references and you know being a Star Wars fan I really appreciated these. They're, it's definitely smutty, don't get me wrong. This has a lot of sex scenes, but it's a fun time. <laughs> so I think this was an interesting take on the Faded Mates trope, and I enjoyed seeing Vectel and, I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, and, and Georgie meet and try to learn more about each other and their cultures. I definitely felt their connection. I think Vectel is more of the protective alpha type. Georgie is really fun overall. I think she's brave, especially for kind of, you know, being thrown into this very strange situation. I'm a little surprised at how well she accepts things going on here, but I'm also kind of here for it. She also just seems really smart and funny, so I had a great time following her. I'm definitely interested to learn more about, like, the alien culture and this planet, as well as, you know, the possible other couples that I'm sure we will explore in future books. So, yeah, I, uh, like, I finished the book and I was like, I really want to know what happens next. So apparently I will be reading this series. <laughs> I think there's like 22 books or something like that, but I'm, you know, I'm here for it. There are some content warnings for rape at the, it's very early on at the beginning. So just be aware of that going into it. But overall, I had a really fabulous time with this and would recommend it if you're looking for some fun alien romance smut. So finally, the last four star book I'll talk about today is Just One Look by Lindsay Cameron. So I received this for review from the publisher through NetGalley and this comes out July 27th. So this is an adult thriller and we follow Cassie who takes a temp job reviewing correspondence in a fraud case. She sees emails between a partner at this firm and his wife and finds renewed purpose in her own life by, you know, kind of looking into their seemingly perfect life until she meets the husband in person and uh, kind of sees something that makes her question the state of his marriage. So now Cassie wants to take his wife's place. So oh my goodness, what a wild ride this was. I think the pacing is fantastic. It's really gripping and fast paced and I immediately got into it. There's a lot of twists and layers here I think in general. There were some things that I, ha I had suspicions about that turned out to be right and so I was kind of you know, it's one of those things where I was pleased that I guessed correctly. I think there were enough things going on here that I didn't feel annoyed, you know, that I had figured out what had happened. There's obviously just like some absolutely crazy things that happen here, mostly because of what Cassie does. And I think that really helps to make me excited to keep reading it. She is definitely not stable and has some issues. I think she's a pretty complex character overall. I think, you know, like on one hand, she's really obsessive and I can't relate to her at all. But on the other hand, we do get to learn her background and it like makes me more sympathetic towards her. So I think the author did a fantastic job writing Cassie as a character. I, again, seriously cannot believe what all Cassie does. She certainly has some stalker tendencies, but I have to admit she's really good at investigating and finding things out on the internet. Forrest seems great at first glance, but I think there's more to him than initially appears. I liked getting to learn more about him as the book progressed, certainly. We have Dalton, who is a friend and co-worker to Cassie. He seems pretty genuine, which is a little bit rare given, you know, all the other people around him. Finally, one of the other characters is Ricky, who is Cassie's supervisor, and I think, you know, he has a bit of an inflated ego, but he can be useful at times. So that's all I really want to say about this because it is a thriller and I think it's best to just experience it for yourself, but I would definitely recommend this one. I had such a fun time with it. So I think if you're looking for that same sort of quality, I guess, as like you, which I haven't read, but I know it's generally about like the same sort of stalker personality. I think if you liked that, you'll probably also like this. But even if you haven't read that, like I have not, I still think that this is absolutely worth picking up. It is so wild and, you know, it's... Uh, yeah, definitely a lot of complex characters that you don't really want to root for, but at the same time you find yourself doing that. If you're looking for a really fast-paced crazy thriller, I would highly recommend checking this out. So with that, those are all the books that I have to talk to you about today. So let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books or think you might pick them up. And for your question of the day, have you read Barbarian Romances before? <laughs> I think it's kind of a niche genre, but I'm kind of into it. I know I have one other book that is a Barbarian Romance, so I may or may not read that soon. Also, I uh, might continue the I Planet Barbarian series. I don't know. So I just started an arc of so We Meet Again, I think that's the title, by Suzanne Park, which is an adult romance, and that comes out early August. So I'm, I'm basically like trying to frantically catch up on all of the arcs that I have requested and gotten approved for. But yes, I, I do have a Discord channel, and if you want to join that, the link's in the description below. I hope you're all having an excellent day and are reading something awesome. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to give it a big thumbs up, as that would certainly help me out. But with that, I think I'm going to wrap it up here and see you in the next one.